I just don't believe that we're just meant here just to win individually. I just don't. I agree. Like it's just it's, and that takes that takes faith because you you don't know sometimes why and sometimes when you you know I keep going back to God. It's it's hard for me not to, but His ways aren't our ways. So that that takes faith. Yeah, and action, and you know, I I believe God will move the mountain, but you have to show up with a shovel. Real business, real business, real business. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like we don't care where you come from, yeah. where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast with myself, Trevor Cowley. Today, guys, I'm Trev Pup. We have the actual Trev Dog on the podcast, Trevor Farns, co-founder of Mountain Ops. Um, First off, welcome to the show. This is awesome. This This is is a long time coming. It's, uh, It's cool to see, you know, this beautiful business that you built and you know, not just a, a business that's about, you know, monetizing, making money, a business that has purpose behind yeah. it, right? Purpose driven. And so it's okay to, to, to make money, but it's feels so much better to be able to make money that also benefits other people and why you're doing it. Right. Yeah. So should we tell them the story, how we met? Yeah, let's do it. I, we can start there. I think it was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it was hilarious. So we met, uh, about six months ago, yeah. you know, um, at an event, uh, of a friend of both of ours, yeah, Kevin, Craig, Hall. Kevin Hall's event. Um, it's a, is it Genshai or Genshai? I always I say Genshai. The, I you always say Genshai, yeah, you know, it. so tomato, yeah. tomato in this, <laughs> in this situation, right? <laughs> We're both right. Yep. You know, it's the same place. <laughs> you're Genshai and I'm Genshai. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, right. you know, that's, that's why I'm trip right. up and you're trip <laughs> up, you know, like that's how it works. So, awesome. um, so I, I, I show up to support Kevin and I kind of wanted to see what it was all about. Yeah. I really I re- I read Kevin's book and was like, man, this is a great book. Yeah. Really and good book. and so I like I never have done this before, but I looked him up on Facebook and I sent him a message. Uh, and found out that he was in Utah. That's awesome. So I thought he was up in northern Utah and he ended up being in St. George where right, I was at. Right and so you. it was like it felt weird that I had a prompting to reach out to an yeah. author when I've never done this before because it's like, why do that? they're not going to reach back out to me yeah. is kind of like your thought process, right? Like, so I hesitated, like, I'm not going to do that. And then I was like, obviously I'm thinking it for a reason. Like there's got to be something there. So I sent him a message and absolutely nothing hmm. for like months, Interesting, you know? And then, and all of a sudden I get a message. Oh, I hardly am ever on here. You know, he's uh, not a social media guy. Yeah. And he's like, here's my cell phone. Call me, cool. you know, or whatever. And, and, and then we connected that way. And, uh, he invited me to the, the retreat. Um, and that's where I met Trevor Mm -hmm. and Kevin was up in front of the group saying, talking, Hey, here's Trevor. He runs 10 miles a day, whatever. I'm sitting there thinking that I don't run 10 miles a day. Like I didn't know there was another another Trevor Trevor in the room. (laughs) Yeah. And And he kept pointing and I'd be like, who, Oh, there's another. Yeah. He's, is he hyping me up? Uh, yeah. Like, oh, I feel like I'm abroad right now. Are you saying I do this and I don't do it? Yeah, I can get that. I see yeah. that. Um, and I'm wearing a Mountain Ops hat. And, and I could see it because you were in the front. Yeah. I go to the back of the classroom. You yeah. go to the front seat. I, I could usually see go the little to the back, dude. I but I bet one little change. icon on the back of your hat. And I was like, yeah. okay, this Trevor that's running yeah. 10 miles a day is a Mountain Ops guy. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. And so, and, and, and I, and I just, Look, I got like 60 hats. Everybody that's watched the podcast, listened to it, whatever, they know I'm a hat guy. Yeah. Um, most people think I'm bald because, yeah. you know, like no, all guys, hair. I'm like, I got good hair, I promise. <laughs> I just don't like doing my yeah. hair. You know, yeah. I prefer throwing a hat on. And uh, I don't need another hat. I don't, I don't I don't even fully remember where I bought this hat. You I told just, me you thought it was in the airport. I, th- I was like, I don't, I don't think we sell our hats in the airport. Because but. I'm like, I don't remember. I'm like, I've been in airports a lot lately. Um, uh, but I just, I remember seeing it and I stopped and I kind of looked at it. I'm like, I don't need another hat, but I'm like, I like this hat, yep. you know? And so it's just really random, the synchronicities that happen in life, yeah. right? I reached out to Kevin after reading his book, got to know him. He invited me to an event. I randomly bought a mountain ops hat when I didn't need another hat. And, and for whatever re- I I was going to wear a different hat that day. And I remember taking it off right before I walked out the door and I grabbed the mountain ops hat and put it on. It's awesome. 
And it would just, it, I, I, I don't ever do that. Yeah. I don't stutter step like that. It's just like, hey, I'm out the door, you know? And uh, after Kevin said, Trevor, to 10 miles a day, whatever, I'm like, yeah, you know, thanks, you know, whatever. <laughs> and out in the hallway, Trev Dog here comes up to Trev Pup and says, <laughs> So did you have mountain ops running through your veins this morning? And I said, no, I actually had, I can't wait to get this over with going yep. through my head though. Yeah. And it was like, well, <laughs> what is nice he to talking meet about? You. You know? And I was like, <laughs> going through my veins, like, again, I wasn't familiar with yeah. the brand. I didn't know there were supplements and this and that, right? Like I, and, and then, um, that, that was to the extent of our first interaction. Right. Cause I was like trying to go to the bathroom, yep. be lining to the bathroom. And we kind of passed each other in the hallway a little bit. And, uh, then later on, I kind of walked by their table. His mom was there. The gal that works for you was with you. Um, I think you had your son with you as well. Beckham was there. Yeah, son, Beckham yeah. was there. Um, and when you're at events, you know, you meet people or whatever. So I was like, oh, these guys seem cool. So I'm standing by. And somebody goes, you know, that's not just a hat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, well, what is it then? You know, uh -huh. there's so much more behind that hat than, than what you even know. Yeah. And they kind of opened up to me there and Trevor spoke there and did an absolutely incredible job. And, uh, you know, Trevor's just one of those guys that like, you don't even have to get to know him that well to know that he's just a good human being. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. um, you. you know, again, I, I'm not a very religious person. You know, I feel like I'm becoming more spiritual and, you know, testing out that side. Yeah. But when you meet people and they kind of have a Holy spirit about them, that's Trevor Farns. <laughs> that's just <laughs> kind of right. who he is. Right. And so, like you just know that this is a, a good human being that's doing good in the world. And I knew that prior to the next day when you gave your talk, right? And then you gave your talk and it was just like, you know, and it's very rare, you know, and, and you need to, you need to know that about you, hmm. right? That you, 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 you have a spirit that's just with you all the time. And people even that aren't religious can feel that. Hmm. Right. And so, and, and, and you're going to make my eyes sweat before we even get started, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm telling you just how, how it is, right. Like, and how, how I see it, right. I'm calling a spade a spade. Right. And, and that's just what it is. Like it, it is, isn't a hype thing. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to pump your ego or build con you know, it just, you know, I, I, you, you should know that about yourself and you probably have heard that before, you know, many, many times I would guess, but, um, you know, he, he's just a guy that makes you want to reflect and wonder where you could do mm. better. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Shit, just man. you being you makes people want to be better. And then if you hear ever Trevor speak and have that privilege, um, he'll continue to stack on that. So <laughs> okay, don't man. hear him speak if you don't want to get better <laughs> or don't hang around him, I guess, if you don't, you know. Uh, so anyways, no, that's how we met. And then I said, man, after listening to this guy, like I'm a mountain ops dude, you know, I'm going to be crunching on their you know, the protein, uh, protein bars because they were good. You brought those yeah. there. And then I, I literally have a mountain ops box sitting on my kitchen <laughs> that arrived at my house like the day before I left to come That's up awesome. here. So, yeah, I, I remember getting yeah. up and uh, to speak at that yeah. event and saying, hey, you've got a really cool hat on and let's let's take a look beyond the mark right yeah. you know let's yeah. let's go beyond this this cool logo, logo that's on yeah. on your hat yeah Let, let's take a look at what uh what this brand is doing out yeah. in the community and such and that it was a great event i i mo more than anything i appreciated the connections that were made at yeah, that you too. being one of the and yeah. one of those and Likewise. it's been fun for kevin to send us messages to the two t dogs i know well remember that <laughs> hey no offense kevin if you ever listen to this but that phone call that oh. was just complete garbage <laughs> because he was on his bike and we couldn't hear him. We're like, hey, he had, he had something just important. Golf. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, that's I got about maybe not even like, half of it. Yeah, but yeah, he's a he's a good man. Yeah, I great, I found man. Kevin's book when he first launched it. I don't know if it was like ten or twelve years ago, and and we read it at another company I was with, and then we used it in our our Conquer book club that we have here at Mountain Ops. Oh, cool. And I posted on social media that we were ut utilizing that book. I didn't yeah. have never met him before one of our customers had, he was a good friend of Kevin's. So he called and he's like, Hey, can I get you on the phone with Kevin tomorrow? And 
Kevin ended up coming up to all of our book club um, every oh, wow. Tuesday. He'd come up, and one of the members of our team would share something from his book, and then Kevin would expound upon it. And I love so that, that he does that. That's how we. Um, that's how we connected. And then as I was writing my own book, I actually hired Kevin to kind of mentor me through the process of oh, wow. finalizing it. And oh, that's cool. so, um, but became a good friend. And and uh, so yeah, it's fun the connections. So just so you guys are aware, Trevor, um, you know, came out with a book and it actually drops today. It's called The Conquer Code. Um, and that's kind of what I want to discuss is some of the things that maybe some people can find in the book. Obviously, I want them to, you know, dive into it for themselves and spend time alone reflecting on the book. But I mean, there there's a lot of obviously lessons in there, right? Um, here Here's the deal. Every, every man or human, I guess I should say, will go through dark times, Yeah, you know, and it's what you do in those dark times to really determine who you are as an individual and how your life ends up. Yeah. And Trevor has experienced dark times, right? Like I'm in this beautiful building and cool environment, meeting great people and around great products and around, uh, the Holy spirit as I sit here <laughs> with, with Trevor. Right. Uh, but it, it wasn't always like that, yeah. you know, and there's somebody that's listening right now that's trying to build their business and everything that they do seems like it's all sliding backwards, yeah. right? Um, nothing's going the way that they hoped it would or dreamed that it would. And they're wanting to quit and give up and, you know, and, and, and Trevor just, you're different, right? You're not, man, you are probably just an overnight success or mm. whatever people want to make up in their mind to create separation from themselves and you so that they could say you're different and label you as something to justify why they're about to walk away or quit or give up. It's just not right. Yeah. It's not right because Trevor has a, an incredible story of going through extreme darkness and, and you know, every person will have to experience that. And the way that Trevor showed up through his dark times, you know, with a just never die attitude. Yeah something beautiful emerged from it. I just don't believe that if you keep showing up that just nothing forever will just always be nothing. Yeah. I just don't, I don't believe it. Yeah. You sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, almost always have to let time do the hard work. Yeah. But you've got to show up every day yeah. and then let, let time do the hard yeah. work. Yes. Create consistency and then add intensity onto that consistency over time. But uh, the, part of the purpose of this book is to reach out to those that might be feeling some of those, those feelings. I understand times. those feelings, yeah. you know, and and you're most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. And so if I can lend a hand, if I can gain, you know, give some insight into what we went through and how we overcame it, um, then I feel like I'm taking those perspective moments, those dark times. I, you know, I, I read in the scriptures, in the Bible, whatever, often uh, every day. And sometimes there's storms that appear in people's lives. And and I have I've come to understand that oftentimes those storms they're not negative they're not mm -hmm. they they can seem scary yeah but sometimes they're blowing you in the direction you need to go yeah. sometimes there's an end point and you need to allow that to to push you the right direction it's hard to do in the moment when the storm is hitting on you know knocking on your door um, but I believe yeah. that God some God will. God will enlighten your mind. He'll open your eyes. He'll open your heart if you choose. It It all comes down to a choice. Of course. And in those moments of darkness or turmoil or struggle or moments where I felt failure, if I turned to a source that I speak of in this Conquer Code, yeah. if I turned to that, my eyes would be open to what I needed to learn in those moments that would help carry me through, that would help me climb the mountain. Yeah. And you get to one summit and there's the other mountain. You know, yeah. It's not like this is ever going to change. Those moments... Those perspectives, those mountains, they give us strength and ability to progress and develop as human yeah. beings into something that's greater than where we're at right now. And that's that's what it's all about. A little better today than yesterday, a little better yeah. tomorrow than today. And and it doesn't have to be this incredible jump all the way. It's let time do the hard work. Yeah. And it's gonna take time. And it took us time. I mean, we went through some struggles and we we faced some trials. Um, and we found out what connections mattered most in our life that would allow us to kind of move on to the next, uh, to the next phase and, and utilize what we've gained as far as perspective and have ownership over that and see the blessing in it and allow that to push us forward. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Like, I mean, obviously you're a, a man of faith, you know, you read your scriptures, you're, you know, and some people might say, well, yeah, that's easy with where you're at now. Right. Like life, life seems good. If somebody's on the outside looking in, you know, were there times where your faith was tested and you're just like, 
I'm doing everything that you say I should be doing. Why am I experiencing this? Because, and the reason why I asked that is, you know, I grew up LDS, I grew up Mormon, and um, I grew up very, very poor. And I watched my mom show up every single week, faithful servant to God, you know, take the sacrament, do all this stuff. And I was just like, okay, well, why are we experiencing what we're experiencing then? Like that, that doesn't make sense that somebody is just following this path so diligently, mm -hmm. but then we're struggling so hard. We can't even have food sometimes or our lights are getting shut off sometimes. I'm like, why would God do that to somebody that's there every Sunday and giving everything that she possibly has? And it got to a point for me when I got older, well, maybe I'm the thing that God put in her life in order to help correct that. Like, why am I looking for something outside of me to say, well, why is she the way? Well, maybe I was put on this earth to be part of the blessing yeah. that she's supposed to receive yeah. in taking care of her and making sure that she's well provided for. Yeah. So taking over that ownership and that responsibility and saying, well, I've been given gifts. I've been giving endless potential and it's up to me to extract it. It's up to every yeah. individual to extract it. But I just remember thinking that at just a very young age and questioning everything. And it's so easy to question everything when, when nothing seems to go your way. And so I wanted to know where your faith was at. <laughs> like, and, and maybe you could tell your story so that people can understand when we just say dark times, yeah. what that really actually means. Because yeah. again, they might just label it as well. Yeah. You don't really know. <laughs> you know, your dark times and my dark times are different, yeah. you know, type thing. So, and, uh, yeah, everyone experiences yeah. different dark times. Yeah. My dark times are pretty common to a lot of people. Business yeah. failure, financial struggle. Mm -hmm. It's not, if I'm in a room of people and I ask how many of you experienced some business failure or some struggle financially, 90% of the room, yeah. room, the hands go up. Yeah. So it's a it's something that people can relate to, mm -hmm. which makes it easy to speak to. Yeah. What we're doing with what we've learned is pretty uncommon with how we're feeding hungry children because we gained perspective because our family was hungry. Um, but yeah, I, I'll tell the story and I'll, I'll talk about my faith um, because it, it, there was never a, a doubt in my mind of where my attention should go or where my faith should lie. It, it wasn't that. The dark times actually were some of the greatest times for me and my wife to come together mm. and for us to come together to look to God. In fact, I was at a, a men's retreat a few weeks ago speaking at it, and my wife was the only woman in the room. I asked her to come out and be with me. We had kind of been apart because I had been business to travel and such. Yeah. So I said, hey, come out to this with me. They they had her stand in the middle of the room at the end. These men all gathered around her, and they put her on the spot. She didn't want to be. And they said, how'd you make it through this? Like, what was it? And she said, we, we came together when we could have turned away and together we looked to God. And that was it. Th there was nothing else. And it was awesome after because this lineup of men to talk to my wife, cause they're like, Hey, how do I, how do I work on things wife. with my wife? Yeah. How do I do this and stuff? And one of them said specifically, okay, yeah, I get it. You guys are faithful people. You, you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe in God, like you turn to that, but what else? Like, give me some more practical, yeah. practical yeah. application. Tell me to take her to Chili's and get the two for 20 or That's something. That's what I like, think he was looking for. Give the, me, probably give me Chili's. Some, yeah, Chili's yeah. is where my wife and I fell in love. It there was only molten go. lava cake. So there's, yes, that would have been the practical see, advice she could have given us. There you go. <laughs> molten lava and cake. And, go uh, it. and she said, there wasn't anything else. Yeah. Sometimes and oftentimes in life, there there is there's nothing else but your trace, your faith and your trust in God for us. That's what we experienced. And that was the most freeing feeling ever in my life. When I could turn completely to him and said, we're at zero. Like yeah. we have nothing left. There's nothing in the bank. We're starting to live life below zero. And there was a moment where all of it was gone one morning, abruptly, um, a, a mishap with a, a past payment on a credit card. And our bank account for the business and our personal account were at the same bank. They went in and wiped out our personal account to pay down the balance of this credit card. And so we woke up to nothing. My wife came into our room and she just was sobbing. What? And I couldn't get her under control. She says, it's all gone. It's all gone. And what? What's all gone? She said, I got into our bank account. Everything is gone. And sure enough, I run to my computer, look in there and it's, there's zero. And I fell to the floor with her. And then we found ourselves on our knees. And my father brought us a... Uh, it was a Friday. He brought us a $50 bill and said, hey, 
we'll figure this out on Monday. We'll call the bank together. We'll, we'll get this all squared away. And uh, so we had $50 to our name. Uh, in our faith, we have something called a, a fast offering. And we went with to the grocery store with that $50, bought some bread and milk, just some necess- necessities yeah. for the weekend. We've had, we have kids, you know, and we had $43 left. And I turned to my wife on Saturday and I said, I think I know what we need to do with this $43. And she said, so do I. And so we turned to God. We started a fast and we put that $43 in a little envelope and we turned it over to God uh, for somebody that might need it. Knowing that if we trust in him when that's all we have left is his trust, like something good's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know how long it would take. We didn't know yeah. what, you know, what it'd be. And some things did happen. But that wasn't the blessing. The blessing for me on that day was turning to him and saying, I'm all yours. Yeah. You're all I've got. And that type of feeling in someone's life is something I can't even put words to describe, Mm -hmm. but it was what we needed. There was strength that came that was far beyond our own. So to get back to how did this all happen? Why did we get to where we were below zero, you know? Um, I have come from an entrepreneurial family in 2007 after having saved up a lot of money and I was in pharmaceutical sales. My wife and I decided to start our own business and uh, we were excited about it. And two two opportunities piqued our interest. One was in real estate right before 2008. So perfect timing to try our wings in that, right? <laughs> and man, we just took it in the shorts and uh, that was bad. And then the other was a franchise and we we were young, ambitious, dumb, naive. We, we bought seven franchises instead of one, you know, yeah. kind of going back You're to going like, let in. time do the hard work. No, we were like, we're going all in fast yeah. now and we're, it's going to just skyrocket. Yeah. And it didn't happen that way. Most things don't. No. And uh, especially if you're trying to do things ethically, it's just, you got to let time do the hard work, yeah. put in the time, yeah. put in the time to something good and it will grow over time. Yeah. Um, I, so many people jump ship so quickly when it just doesn't happen in the first month. And I, I can tell you, it doesn't happen in the first month. You know, you could have the best idea ever, but you've got to yeah. put in the time and yeah. it's good. Um, and so we, um, we invested in this franchise. Some things went uh, wrong at the franchise level, and they shut all the franchisees down for a. T- they needed to do a little investigation. Had nothing to do with us, uh, but we had to close our doors. And now, all of a sudden, working capital, cash flow started to mean something to me that it didn't before. Like I was gaining this education. I didn't have any working capital. I didn't have any cash flow. I needed these stores to produce, and I had just furnished seven stores, bought inventory for them, hired seven friends, paid. You know. It, the the monthly rent and and signed personal guarantees for five years on all of those seven stores. They were like five to seven grand a month. So we're this young couple with all this investment into these businesses, into these franchises, and they were closed. So we had no transactions coming through. And we just couldn't withstand the time um, that, that we needed. We didn't have any staying power. So we ended up winding those down, closing that up, couldn't pay our mortgage, had a daughter end up in the hospital with some kidney and liver issues at the time. She was deemed uninsurable because there was a mishap in our insurance from when we went from employed to self-employed. Yeah. Everything just seemed to be going against us. Yeah, and, I mean everything. I felt like I didn't. Ha- I I had the touch of destruction. Everything I touched was not. There's no not, golden not, touch. Not the Midas touch. Not the Midas touch. You were Midas's ugly young brother. I, whatever you know, that was. It everything just, was turned into crap. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything. And I, yeah. I didn't understand why. I didn't ever ask um, God like, "What are you doing to me?" I was. It was more like, hey, what am what should we learn from this? There's a yeah. scripture that I love that says I do this for a wise purpose. And it usually comes along in those scriptures with a story of somebody that's struggling, somebody that for a moment they're having to endure something. And if they endure it well, then you will overcome, you'll be blessed, this and that. I've never seen a story that has this incredible outcome where people learn, they grew, they were blessed without looking back and saying, okay, they there was this there was a story before where they actually went through a battle. They, yeah. you know, it was, it was turmoil. It was failure. It was suffering. And I believe that uh, those who God loves, he tests, he tries because how else will we turn to him? How else will we experience his strength? How else will we experience mm. the ability to, to find faith and hope unless we turn to him and we trust in him. And so all these experiences in my life, Fortunately, and it talks in, in my book, it talks about my foundation in the, the home that I grew up in and, and some routines that my parents got me into of, of reading the scriptures. My mom calls them the, her letters from home. And so I open up every day and I have for the last 27 years of my life. You, you know, you're on this streak of this running. Like I've been on this streak of scripture mm-hmm. reading, reading and I call it like every day. I'll, I'll pick it up, read a letter from home 
what does God want to teach me today? And I try to hear him. And every, yeah. every day is different. Some days I'm better than others, but I do. I open it up every day. And that started in my foundation as a youth. So when I'm going into this adulthood where life's coming at me fast and I've got kids I'm supposed to provide for and, and I'm feeling like a failure and my wife can't do the things that she loved to do, you know, I open up a letter from home and there's this, this story of somebody else that's struggling and it, it caused them to turn to God or an example of it causing them to turn the other way, turn which away. is the choice. Yeah, You turn to him or you can turn the other way, but there is a strength, there is a power, there is an ability that comes our way that is beyond our own when we turn to the, the source of ability to conquer. And the conquer code for me, the title of the book, it's Jesus Christ. In every page of this book, you'll find him in the stories that I share. I We've chosen throughout our life and never perfect at it, but we've chosen to, to lean on him and to find strength through him. And it and it's worked. Yeah. And so, you know, if I can ever share with anyone, I'm not going to shy away from that. I am who yeah. I am wherever I am. It's not yeah. like I'm this compartmentalized business and community and church and family. It's like, this is this is what I've found to be the source of my strength in life. Yeah. And, and people see that in different ways. And I honor and respect that. Um, there's a higher power that can mean something different for, for everyone. But for me, there is an ability to become acquainted with that source of strength through adversity. And so I saw these opportunities as like, this is our choice to turn to and find strength or to turn away. It's like, have you heard the story of the buffalo or the cow where yeah. the storm's coming going and you, you know, go into it and away versus it. running yeah. away? And that's what we chose to do. We, we turned to it and we found him in the storm. We, we became acquainted with who he is and his suffering that allows us to feel his strength. And, you, you know, I shared at the, in the beginning of this, like, that you're most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. That's why, in my opinion, Jesus Christ is the most powerful. He's most powerfully positioned to serve all of us yeah. because he's been through, he's suffered. That's why he did all of that. And so we're, we don't have to go it alone. And we can find strength beyond our own. And we can overcome these obstacles in life. And, and it becomes a blessing. It becomes what we need to develop and to grow. So I just think if if life was always easy, yeah, I think it it it's me. I must have that that Midas touch, you know. Yeah, and then I don't rely on the strength of the giver who's given us all that we have. And so, um, so that's that's the approach we took. And I I you know owe it to my parents, and then I owe it to a wife who has that that same approach in her life. Mm-hmm. Who I'm not her priority. Jesus Christ is. And so there's some trust and ability and strength that comes from that to have a wife that when you're going through that, she's like, we, we know who in who to trust and let's turn to him together. Let's not turn away. We could easily do that. Yeah. So I was just, you know, so grateful that through that process, um, that's the source that we, that we found together. So when you guys, you guys paid that tithe, magically millions of dollars showed up in your bank account, <laughs> right? Like that's the, st- and that's how the story ends, right? And yeah. the mountain ops was born and yeah. here we are today. Yeah, no, no it was like seven know, so- years of famine after that, but there was, okay. but there was blessing. There was okay. ability, there was peace. There was decision-making and there was people that come into our path. It was, it was incredible to watch. Some people think that this action causes this reaction. Yeah. And they, they think that financial, financial, it's, no, what if it's like, fewer medical bills or the doctors start to work with us on like the, the payments that we have, or what if we were able to stay in our home for two years without paying our mortgage and I couldn't pay the mortgage. I needed to buy some food and food was a topic of conversation. All these little blessings that just allowed us to, to go through those. And, uh, and we chose through that time to recognize God at mountain ops. Our number one core value is recognizing God. Yeah. We acknowledge his hand, even in the workplace. And, uh, and I, I do that because I, I've looked back upon my life and I've seen these things and I, I can't I can't speak of my story or my wife's or even the entrepreneurial journey without saying this is his hand involved. Yeah. And these resources we're utilizing, they're given as a gift from him. And uh and so it was interesting because as we you know, we called it our seven years of famine, as things started to get better and we're coming out so of So how famine, did they get how did they start getting better? Right. Like, so you had seven years of famine. What were you doing to try to make it yeah. like better? Okay. So, yeah. Six different business failures. Okay. <laughs> like one thing after another where it was like, okay, this isn't going to work. This partnership's not right. This is whatever it was in 2010, which wasn't, you know, seven years later. It's, it's a few years into this now. Okay. I was starting to, 
lose myself a little bit as far as um, business goes. You know, you're living life below zero. You're trying to replace what's been lost. Yeah. And I started to become a little bit transactional in my business pursuits. Like, hey, what can I sell? Yeah. What can I do? Yes. It, you know, and I'm I'm a mission driven individual. And I if I have a mission that I can get behind, like watch out. Like I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it even if it's difficult. And my father was at the time having some heart issues. And we have a heart history of heart disease in my family. His dad died of a heart attack. My mom's dad died of a stroke. My dad just um, went in with some, you know, he should have, he was probably on the verge of a heart attack and they found that he had some complete blockage. So they put some stents in um, to help increase some blood flow, but he could never feel his fingers and toes. He was always like sitting there like this, you know, and, and horrible neuropathy. Uh, yeah. His blood circulation was just horrible and high blood pressure. And so he was kind of on that path, similar path to his father and, yeah. and such. And we knew his brothers, I've got four, I've, there's four brothers in my family. Like that's probably our future. And at the time, because my dad was going through that, I picked up a book that I typically wouldn't read on chemistry. And it was a book called yeah. No More Heart Disease. And it talked about nitric oxide and some ingredients that can produce nitric oxide in our body, amino acids, arginine and citrulline that are in some of our products. And I just thought, okay, my dad is actually taking one of these amino acids, but the book says he should be taking more and he should be taking this on top of it. So I, I found a chemist friend and said, hey, could you whip up a concoction for me that has the, all these ingredients from this book? And I want to see what it does for my dad. And the, um, he took we, we took that concoction, gave it to my dad. Within about three days, he started to feel the tingling sensation in his fingers and toes. So I was super excited. Because I was like, this is a product. If I can create yeah. it, I, I've got a business that I can get behind. I've got a mission now that I can go after. And that mission is my dad. Meaningful. Yeah. yeah. And then the millions of people around our country and world that are suffering from heart disease, number one killer in America. And so I just thought, man, there's this massive need and uh, and maybe I can approach it in a, in a unique way with this product. And uh, I didn't have any resource to get that business going. I didn't have any money. I couldn't buy the, the inventory, you know. Yeah. And so I went to some brothers of mine that had some business success and uh, asked them if they'd invest in it with me. And they were excited because it had some personal meaning for all of us. Yeah. So they helped me buy the first 350 bottles. Uh, I built the website, design labels, uh, was doing social posts like uh, when social media wasn't super big. I, just doing everything on my own. Had a little teeny uh, office with some, you know, the 350 bottles behind me just hoping, yeah. okay, I've got to turn this on. If you build it, they, they will come. Will, yeah. No, it doesn't happen. Build the dreams. Yeah. Supplements is a super saturated space yes, and there is a much. lot of lies and there's a lot of false claims and lab false label claims out there. And I started to notice that I, I, you know, this website was up and I was going around searching what are others doing. I'd find a before and after photo of a transformation on one site and I go to another site and I'd see the same person. I'm like, well, they were using this right now. Yeah. And it's just all stock yeah. imagery in this, yeah. you know, and people hiding behind screens, false claims, all these things. And so the saturation of that marketplace makes it even worse when you have all these people willing to tell lies or about promising. promising. Yep. Yeah. And so um, the first order that actually came through our website was uh, probably a week later and I was laying on my couch at home and I the little bing on my phone and I looked and it was an order for like 12 bottles of this product. I only had one product. I called it L-Arginine Complete and, uh, and it was a doctor out of California. So I called him the next day, tried to act like I wasn't excited that, you know, I didn't want him to think you're the first. I'm the first. Yeah. You know? But yeah. <laughs> Welcome. You're our millionth customer. So I'm going to call you personally. Yeah, I'm calling yeah. you personally. Yeah. Why are you buying this? Yeah. And I did. I, yeah. I asked today, hey, I just want to check in, see yeah. what you're buying this for. Yeah. And he said, well, I've got all these patients to have neuropathy and blood pressure issues. And I thought, well, that's, that's awesome. That's why I formulated this product. And it was a chiropractor. So I ended up going and knocking just every door I could in Utah of like, chiropractors. Uh, hey, can I, can I interest you in this product? And, there's your leads. Right and there. then yeah. I said, hey, I'll give you a few few bottles of this for free if you share it with your email uh, email list of other chiropractors. And that's how I started to build. And it was a slow, steady process. That's why the the set it was a seven year process of just like grinding. Like yeah. I finally found after a few years something that I could get behind and something that I want to push. And it was benefiting my father and my family. And and now these doctors who had heart heart disease patients that yeah. they were dealing with. And so I was excited about that. About four years into that, I just thought, I want to be in touch with the consumer a little more. Right now I'm working through these doctors. I don't have this. And yeah. the, the the brand itself on that one, it's not exciting. It's, it's cool. It's scientific. It's working really well yeah. for these doctors. It's in its 14th year of business and doing really well right now. Um, but I met with a, a marketing agency because I wanted to do some new branding with that, some ex more exciting marketing. And they were telling me all the marketing they were doing in the hunting industry. 
And I just thought, well, I've got all these products I've created now for these doctors that could these work in the hunting space? Cause I'd never hunted. Yeah. Um, and their eyes lit up and they just said, this is there, there's like this huge hunter athlete movement with Under Armour and Yeti and Sitka and big brands right now. And, but there's no consumable product leading the way. So if we brand this correctly, and if your products actually work, we could do some pretty major things with this. And within about six months, we had mountain ops, uh, mountain, the mountains we face in life. And we had just gone through all these mountains we were facing. So it had yeah. some really good meaning for me yeah. and ops is outdoor performance supplements. And so I partnered with these guys and, and we were off to the races in an industry I didn't understand, but a very like cultish following industry, this a uh, hunter. Hunting, yeah. I mean, it's what they eat, drink, sleep, yeah. breathe, everything, yeah. you know, it's why their bank accounts in and out of the negative. Exactly. So they, uh, they, hunting's they, expensive. They pay a lot yeah. to go and suffer on yeah. the mountain, yeah. but it's like this, this experience I didn't understand at first. I, I could see that there was this passion Yeah. and now I got to fuel this passion of the hunt. And if you think about products that hunters use, I know you, you shoot a bow. Some people shoot their bow every day. Not everyone. Usually you're using that bow on a hunt or you go out target hunting. If you, if you don't shoot a bow and you shoot a gun, you're not shooting your gun as often as you might a bow. You might have a pack that you like, but you're not using it very often. So these hunters that that's their life and they're thinking about it every single day. What product can activate, can kind of spur that, that yeah. passion they can to hunt. a pocket knife, but, but you know, it, but, you know, but they can, but they ops, can use it, it ignites every that day. hunt, yeah. that passion in yeah. them, a, a product that it's almost kind of, nostalgia reminds yeah. them of what they love. Exactly. Yeah. So we were onto something with a brand that like, okay, this resonates. 70% of our customers when we started had never used supplements before. They're not shopping in GNC. They're not going yeah. to Gold's Gym. They're up in God's they're like, Gym. That's they're for bodybuilder. And, or, yeah, it wasn't you know. speaking their language. Yeah. But now yeah. all of a sudden there is a brand that's speaking that outdoor enthusiast, the hunter, and they loved it and they gravitated towards it. And the products tasted great and yeah. they could feel the difference. And so, um, so that was awesome. But there's still a lot of saturation in supplements out there. So there how is. do we differentiate yeah. ourselves? Well, my wife and I, again, going back to the struggling times, w- when we were coming out of those, we almost missed it. We almost were like, hey, w- I'm, I'm a little worried that we, won't ha- that we won't lean on God enough because the connection with him right now is so strong and he's showing up so often that uh, I don't want to lose that. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of an, it, it was kind of an interesting dilemma. Obviously, we wanted the, the relief financially yeah. in that. But what could we do with that financial relief that would keep us connected with God? And during that, food was the topic of conversation. We've got to feed our children. And my wife would call me and there's not a lot in the pantry. Or she'd call me and say, hey, somebody just left groceries on our doorstep. And this would happen on a regular basis. And, uh, and those were miracles to us. And we love the scriptures. Anytime for me, anytime I read in, in the Bible or whatnot, and it talks about like feed my sheep, like I know it's talking about like the gospel message and stuff, but I, during those times would take that literally like, okay, when I can, I'm going to feed his sheep. I, I know what it's like to, as a parent, to struggle with the weight of not knowing if you can feed your children the next yeah. day or, or tapping into your food storage, which doesn't taste super great. And you're, you know, the kids' bellies are hurting. And fortunately, we had food storage. We thought it was going to be for a natural disaster. It was for our own personal disaster. Um, but we made a commitment. And we looked at, like, the loaves and fishes stories. And he he took a few loaves and a few fishes. Not a lot. Something simple. And we didn't have a lot at the time. But what could we do with what we do have to try to multiply them a little bit, to to use these loaves and fishes? And and during the struggle, we, t- we committed $22 a month to a group out of Malawi, Africa, that would feed a child for 30 days. And that, to me, just made me feel like, okay, God is is going to help us along the way. The boat, I don't know if it'll ever come in full, but we can take whatever he does give us, even if it's two loaves and yeah. a few fishes, and we can try to multiply them. And that's what we, we did, $22. And then as the business grew, we did a little bit more. And now we're in this hunting industry where we've been, as a husband and wife, doing this. We didn't call it con- conquer hunger. We didn't call it anything. It was just we were feeding hungry children. Doing what you thought was just, right. But now we had all these correlations because we made a commitment to each other. And we yeah. remember the night we were laying in bed and it was, we wrote out after reading Think and Go Rich, Grow Rich, we wrote out kind of our statement. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to request from God. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's what we want in return type thing. We, I still have it laminated with tape that I carry around. It's, it's in my, my drawer. But, um, and uh, we made a commitment to do this, to feed hungry children. And so now we've started this mountain ops company. We're out on the mountain bringing home food for our family. And I'm a new hunter. And that's what intrigued me first. It's like, I get to go home or go out yeah. and bring in some protein, yeah. right? 
and we're selling supplements to people when they can, there's people around the world and even here in our state of Utah that can't fathom two meals a day, yet alone supplement for their nutrition. Yeah. All these correlations were coming together and I thought this is the vehicle that we, you know, we made a commitment. We can multiply our loaves and fishes through this and the resource that comes by selling a bottle of, of our Ignite or our Yeti or whatever the product is, we can take a little bit of that resource and feed a, a hungry child or family. And so that's what we've done over the last seven years. We're about to complete 10 years of Mountain Ops, but the Conquer Hunger thing started a little bit later. And we're, we've just hit the 6 million milestone of meals donated through Operation yeah, Conquer Hunger. Incredible. Taking those loaves and fishes, yeah. a little bit of resource. And what that does to a community as well is you looking at two supplement brands side by side. I, this one says they've got great ingredients. This one says they've got yeah. great ingredients that both taste good. They this or that. Like the, the advertising is going to be the same. Right. For the most part. Yeah. But I'm, you know, you know, if, if there's a brand that's doing something for the community, I can benefit from the product by taking this product myself. I can go through a physical transformation. I can feel healthier. I can be, have the energy. And at the same time, what I'm buying here provides a resource to help a child or a family in need. Uh, it's a beautiful system. Yeah. So we've put it in place and our communities just rallied around it. Our team has rallied around it. So we hold these big events where we're packing 50, 60,000 meals in an hour and a half. Tomorrow morning, we'll do one with a big youth group and we'll do about 30,000 meals tomorrow. And you walk away after that thinking, okay, this this is not just a supplement yeah. brand. Yes, yeah. it, it's there to help improve lives. And that's our mission. And the products do, they work, they they improve lives. Um, but there's some that are struggling a little bit more than than those that are able to uh, afford these supplements. And and we can do something about that. And so we've taken a portion and and that's where we're, that's where we're at. And now you guys know... That yes, I have mountain knobs running through my veins <laughs> in the morning when I do my ten miles. Thank and goodness. that's the story of why Trevor takes mountain knobs <laughs> from Trevor, right? So, um, and these guys are doing something really, really cool. You know, they're trying to is the world record to do a million mils in a day. Yeah, July twenty sixth. We've got so that at Salt Palace. So. That's coming up. You know, within the next you know week or two. Yeah, um, and. Uh, you know, it's just incredible to watch somebody go from what looks like the pit of despair, <laughs> you know, where nobody would want to be in that situation to um, working your way out of that situation for something that was meaningful to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, you you had a there was a cause behind it, yeah. a mission behind it. And that mission was your father at that point. Now the mission continues to grow and grow and get bigger. And it's like. Yeah, I just think like if you didn't respond the way that you responded, you know, now there's not, you know, five million, six million mills, you know, seven, eight, you know, tens of millions by the time, you know, we fast forward 10 years down the road, all of that just doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. And I think had we not been there, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. And that's why I think those perspective moments, whether it's yeah. dark times or storms or whatever yeah. we want to go, rock bottom, whatever it's called, like take a moment to recognize that there's something that you can own from that. There's perspective gain. And for me, it was like eyes wide open to a yeah. need that I was like, we're the one in four family here in Davis County, Utah, that goes home without enough food. There's one in four kids. Like I would have never known that before, you know? And so I would just say to anyone listening, the, the those dark times, those struggles, there's perspective that is being gained and there's empathy that's being earned that now you have a power to do something yeah. that you couldn't have before. And so, you know, something for me from a spiritual level, you hit rock bottom. I found my rock more than I ever have before. Yeah. And so you're not, you're not finding God at the bank when you're cashing million dollar checks. No. So, you know, you, you know, you're, you're, you're probably riding your own ego and your own that, you know, a lot, a, a lot of people, never have the blessing to hit rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I've told people before, I had, I had the luxury yeah. of growing up poor yeah. because now I have perspective. Yep. But when you're growing up poor and you're embarrassed about not wanting your friends to come over to your house yeah. or have a girl ask you on a, a, a to Sadie's or whatever, and she's got to decorate your top bunk mm. in the room that you share with your four other brothers mm. because there's two sets of bunk bed. It's just embarrassing. Yeah. Right. And so I, during that time, I was, why, why, why? 
you know, I was the kid checking the mail, looking at the publisher clearinghouse, ripping that thing up. Did we find, are we going to win? Yeah. Because back in the day, the big check guy would I show would me. I always ask my dad, can you please like, can do, we do this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, those infomercials got yeah, me going as a kid. You, like, why? Huh? You know? And it was also these, hey, for $59, you buy this program, you can make $10,000 a month in real estate. And I'm like, why aren't you guys buying that program? <laughs> I'm like, it's not that hard. I sell $20 worth of golf balls at the golf course after I clean them up That's out of the awesome. bushes. I like, don't make me go buy that. You know, it just, it didn't make sense. It's so hard at the time, but would you ever take that back? Ever, yeah. you know? And it's like, that's the thing is when you're going through it, it's up to you to make it make sense. Yeah. It's not going to just like all of a sudden hit you like a ton of bricks and just like, hey, everything makes sense. I understand that I need to go through this dark time and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. it just doesn't work like that. It's up to you to do the work while you're going through that yeah. to gain the perspective that you need in order to become the individual you're supposed to yeah. so that you have the ability to not only just make the impact that you're supposed to make in your own life, but many others. Yeah. Because I just don't believe that we're just meant here yeah, just to ourselves. win individually. Yeah. I just don't. I agree with Like, you. it's just, it's... And that, it, take, that takes faith because you you don't know sometimes why. And yeah. sometimes when you, you know, I keep going back to God, it's it's hard for me not to, but his ways aren't our ways. So yeah. that, that takes faith. Yeah. And action. And, you know, I, I believe God will move the mountain, but you have to show up with a shovel. Yeah. You know, it's like... You've got to go I've and you said start. the same thing before. My like people just digging. want the hole, yeah. but God just gives you the shovel. Yep, yep. And that there's you got to do the work. Yeah, opportunity is one yeah. of our core values here. It usually shows up just, you know, in disguise it as hard work, you know. Shows up like crap. Shows up, yeah. yeah. So it's just, and that's, that's hard. I mean. It, you, it's hard to listen to people say that when they're in the moment and they're like, again, well, you. it's easy for you guys to say, like. Look, I've had all that. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Like I've been there. Look, I've also been the individual that thought, okay, well, I grew up poor and the only problems that we really had is lights turning off. There was no money, you know, no food, no this. I was embarrassed about the way that I lived. So every problem that I had, so I thought as a child, it revolved around money. Mm. So if I solve that problem, I'm on easy street. Yeah. Life is going to be amazing. But what happens if you do all the work and you commit and you end up making a bunch of money and it's, it's much, life is much grander and bigger than material things that money can buy. Cause yeah. money just buys only material things. You can make more uh, meaning with money by serving other people yeah. like Trevor's talking about with operation conquer hunger. But if, if the money only impacts you and that's why you're chasing it, you're going to be left with a hollow version of yourself yeah. and you're going to actually end up in a worse place mentally that's why you see athletes and celebrities and very wealthy people, you know, depressed or, you know, doing drugs or alcohol. They're trying to numb themselves because they're running from yeah. despair and pain and because they're just not living yeah. in the right way with intention. It's yeah. It's been all about them and it doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't 100%. work. Yeah. So it, 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 you have to make yourself better for the purpose that. One of one of our core values at Real Business Owners, R E A L E, is for elevate yourself and others. Mm. Guess what? When you elevate yourself, by default, others will be elevated. Yeah. One, you're you're leading by example. Yeah. When you create an environment, just like we talked about, Nick running, he was just in the environment of me running. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now he runs every yeah. single day. So I didn't start running because I was like, hmm, I want Nick to start running. So I, my goal is to run. So yeah. that he, I elevated myself. Yeah. And by default, when somebody's around an elevated individual, they want to elevate yeah. themselves as well. And then when you are elevated, you have the ability to help and serve more people. So, right. Yeah. And so that's what you did is you, you, you did, you lived by that yeah. value. Well, right? in Kevin Hall's book, it says, there's a quote that says they rise highest who lift as they go, you know, and it, it's just so true. And, uh, and there's so much more joy and satisfaction. Life is about connection, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's where you'll find true value and giving your time and attention to the connections that matter most. You yeah. Know, family, team, God, like that's what I've found through all of this. Yeah. And, and you find out which connections will help you make it through. Yeah. And, uh, and that becomes super, super powerful. So yeah. you, we connect and we conquer. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, thank you for being on the podcast. This is awesome. Um, it thank was you. awesome. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, everybody that's listening, please go out there and, uh, check out the conquer code. Would they just go to Amazon? Is that where it's going to be? Amazon, or? the Is conquer there... code. Okay. We've got every, for the first little while, every book order will 
donate 10 meals to children in need through Operation Conquer Hunger, and it will enter you into an elk hunt in 2025 with me here in Utah. So we're excited about that. Um, we're always looking for ways to experience things with those that are supporting us. Yeah, so. yeah, no, that's super cool. So do you do you have like a trevorfarns.com website uh, for the stuff The conquercode.com is actually, code. you can go com. find it. That will, okay. that will link you back to the Amazon page. But that yeah. is that, that you know, there's a little trailer on there that talks about the book and why, yeah. it's, why it's here. Special and, and meaningful. Yeah, and yeah. what it's about. And then you can buy it on Amazon or listen to the audio. The audio is going to be interesting. I'll just give this kind of little uh, did you notification. Do I did it. Um, I have my publisher is down in Austin, Texas. So I flew down there three years, uh, probably a month ago. And um, as you saw in this podcast, my eyes sweat a little bit. I'm in the hunting industry. So every once in a while, the eyes get a little sweaty. Yeah. And the fitness industry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I read the book and I don't like listening to my voice, but I there's some emotion in it. I've never listened to an audiobook where the author cried a lot, but you're yeah. going to hear. If if I had yeah. done it this way, we would have been in there trying to do retakes for a you know a whole month. So yeah. I just I just told him just keep recording. We'll we'll work through yeah. the tears. So yeah. you might hear a little teary eyed uh, man in the in teary eyed <laughs> and maybe some sniffles while he's some pulling sniffles. himself back together. But, uh, you know? but yeah, it's just all personal stories yeah. of mine that yeah. uh, that have impacted my life yeah. and the lives of others. So yeah, how do they support Mountain Ops? How's what's the best way to do that? Is it just MTN OPS is the is the website, website and the Instagram handle and that has every notification of what we've got going on and the product every purchase like I mentioned uh, provides a meal to a child in need and yeah so yeah it's a great cause all the way around I mean the book uh, you know being able to supply ten meals every time you buy supplements it's doing you know you're doing yourself a favor by supplementing you but you're also doing the world a favor yeah you're elevating yourself. And others. Uh, look know? at that. Yeah, look at that. Real. Full circle. So <laughs> for real, man, I appreciate you. And uh, anybody that's listening, if you know somebody that's going through some dark times right now, I would share this show. Uh, I know it's impactful. I know where Trevor's heart is. I know what he's doing. I know what he's been through. And I know where he's at right now. And, uh, you know, it can happen to anybody. Yeah. You know, it just takes, like, like he said, time. And so share the show with somebody that you love and care about that you know would uh, benefit from the message. And other than that, guys, keep kicking ass, and we'll see you next week. 